Well, we're in a series right now entitled Joyful. And we're going to talk about joyful. And I think this season reminds us of how we can and should be joyful. And many of us, we're, we're, the Lord is going to remind us and point out that we can walk in a joyful way. That's what I want to focus on today, a joyful way. Some of us, we've had a hard way this year. Some of us, we've gone the wrong way this year. Some of us, things didn't turn out the way we thought. And somebody told you that's the way the cookie crumbles. Somebody told you recently, just get out of my way. Well, we're going to talk about having a joyful way. And here's what I want to invite all the kids to do. Kids, you have M&Ms. I want you to open up your M&Ms. Church Online, if there's a piece of paper there and you can write a big M on it for your kids so they can participate in this message. But I want you to pick out your favorite color, okay? You need to rest, but pick out your favorite color. Say that, and I'm going to use the M&M to share the story of Christmas to us from the Bible. Now with that in mind, let's go to Matthew chapter 2, verse number 1. And this is the account. It talks about the birth of Christ and the wise men coming. Verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one that's been born, King of the Jews? We saw his star when it arose, and we have come to worship him. So now, kids, what I want to do is I want to tell you about the true story of Christmas, the meaning of Christmas. And I want to use that M&M. So I want you to grab that M&M. You're going to notice there is an M on it. And from that M, I'm going to tell you the story of Christmas from the Bible. The first thing I want to tell you that M stands for Mary. Mary. Now, Mary was the person that God selected, and she would give birth to our Savior, Jesus. Now, Mary was not a princess. She was not a queen. She was not wealthy. She didn't live in a castle. Do you know Mary was just an everyday average person? According to Scripture, Mary was just a peasant, a commoner. With all due respect, she was kind of a nobody, really. And I don't say that disrespectful, but she was kind of a nobody. She was not, not, nothing special about her. But you know, God selected her. And what it reminds us is that God can use anyone. God can use anyone. Mary was not important in that day. In fact, we would have never heard about her other than the fact God selected her. And it reminds us that God can use anyone. So that M on the M&M &M stands for Mary, but it also stands for something else. It stands for me. So kids, at the count of three, I want you to say that together with me. One, two, three. Me. God can use me. God can work in my life. And here's what I want to share with you. You are always God's first choice. You're always God's first choice. Maybe you're not on the honor roll. Maybe you're not the cool person at school. Maybe you're not the star athlete. Maybe you, you don't make the best grades all the time. Maybe you're not as good at something as somebody else is. But you know what? You are God's first choice for the plan he has for you. God chose Mary, and God can work with me. Another word that the M stands for, and that is miracle. You see, the birth of Jesus was a miracle. Now, what is a miracle? A miracle is something that God does that no one else can do. When, when something happens and say only God can do that, that's a miracle and we can't do it. For example, the Bible tells us that Jesus fed a multitude of people with just a little bit of food. He, he multiplied it. In fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus walked on the water. We can't do that. That is a miracle. And what it is showing us that the beginning of the life of Jesus was a miracle. And God is saying to every one of us, there are times in life when we can't do it on our own. A miracle is a wonder, the Bible talks about a sign or miraculous happening. It's when God does something you cannot do. 
That is a miracle. And you need to know, and I need to be reminded, that in my life, that M, in my life, God can bring a miracle. If you're ever at a point and you say, I don't know how it's going to happen, I don't think it will ever work for me. Some of you are thinking, I'll never be able to, to, to be, uh, have my own business. I'll never be able to launch my career. I'll, I'll never get out of this mess. I'll never get beyond this. We need to understand God is in the miracle business. That's what he does. Also, the M on the M&M stands for manger. Manger. The Bible says that when, when the Christ child was born, Mary, she placed him in a manger. Now, a manger was probably made of stone. It was a place that they would put food or water for the animal, animals. And, and probably Mary put some hay in it to kind of soften and make a bed for the, for the baby Jesus at that time. And the Bible says that he placed, her, placed Jesus in a manger. And that's... That's a part of the story, a very humble beginning, very humble beginning. But the M also stands for Magi. The Bible says Magi came to where Jesus was. That's what that M stands for. Now, here's what I want you to do with your M&M. &M. Okay, you see it? It's an M. I want you to turn it upside down until it makes a W. Would you do that, kids? All around. I want you to turn the M&M &M upside down until it makes a W. Why? Because the Bible says Magi came, but we actually have another name for these, these persons that came to Jesus. We typically call them what? Wise men. The, the versions that I read from says Magi, but we typically call them wise men. So let's make that M a W, and it stands for wise men. Why are they called wise men? These were guys that were super smart. And, and the Bible tells us, gives us the hint, that they would look up at the stars in the heavens, the sky at night, and they were very learned, probably uh, schooled in astronomy, but they were also astrologers. And that is, they believed that the movement of stars had something to say and, would, and would, was a message that was given to them. And then all of a sudden at night, they saw there was one star in the sky at night that became brighter than all other stars. And it seemed to move. And the Bible tells us they followed that star and because they were smart enough to figure that out and they were smart enough to follow that star, that's why we call them wise men. They follow the star. Now, I want you to know these are the first persons to ever pass the star test. That's right. Now, kids, at, at some point in school, you're going to come to the star test. I want you to know that it was the wise men. They first passed the star test. And they just went and they fall. They said, I don't understand what it means. I don't know where it's going. And that's a good lesson for us. There are times in life God will direct you, but you don't know how it's going to come out. There's going to be times in our life where we're going to say, I feel like well, I should do this, or the Bible says I should do this, but I don't know how it's going to turn out. And the lesson is, always follow God even if you don't understand it. And the wise men did that. And because they did that, they came to the birthplace of Jesus. Now, I want you to take the M&M. &M. We've made a W out of it. I want you to turn it until it looks like an E, okay? Until it looks like it. Turn your M&M &M around until finally it looks like an E to you. Would you do that? And the Bible says the magi, or the wise men, they came from where? It starts with an E. It's a word. I read it to you a moment ago in the Scripture. They came from where? It's an E. Not Elmendorf, no. Not East Texas. Where? From the East. Wise men, magi, came from the East. And what does that say to us? Sometimes, sometimes you have to leave where you're at you have to leave some friendships behind. Sometimes you have to leave some of your own opinions behind. And you have to step out 
and you have to follow Jesus. Wise men came from the east. But there's another word I want to give you out of the letter E, and that's easy. You see, Jesus made it easy for us to understand God. Prior to Jesus coming, there was a belief in God, but we really didn't understand God. And God says, we're struggling to understand him. And God says, I'm, I'm going to send my son so you can see what Jesus is like. And therefore, it will make it easier for you to understand I'm a loving, compassionate God. And that's what that E stands for, is, is Jesus made it easy for us to get to God and made it easy for us to, to love God. Now I want you to turn your M&M &M over again. Let's go back and let's make it a W again. Would you do that? Turn it back around until your M&M &M looks like a W. And there's a, there's a word I want to give you. The Bible says wise men came from the east and they came to do what? When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him. That's what the scripture says. They worshipped him. Now what is the word worship mean? The word worship actually means worth, worth-ship, worth-ship. You go to the store and it'll have a price tag on something on it. And then something next to it will have even a more expensive price tag. And you say, why is it more expensive? Because it's worth more. That's the idea of worship. And worship is when we give to God and we tell God in whatever way, whatever expression, that he is worth something to us. Do you know by coming to church today and church online, by you participating in the service, what you're saying is, God, you're worth it. You had other things you could have done, but you set aside that activity. You set aside that interest. You turned all that off. You said, for this period of time, nothing is worth more to me than God. That is worship. When we give an offering, that is worship. When we sing a song, when we express, when we give God our heart. Anytime you give something in your life that is value and you say, God, you're more valuable than something else I'm going to do, the Bible considers that an act of worship. We tell God, God, you're worth it in my life. Now I want you to turn the M&M from a from a W until it looks like a three, the number three. Would you do that? Come on, kids, turn that around. Make the, make the, the M, the W, look like a three. What does the three stand for? When the wise men came to Jesus, they brought how many gifts? They brought three great gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, we know gold is valuable. We understand that. Frankincense, what is that? That was a perfume. You say, perfume? Well, in that particular day, perfume was as valuable as gold. It was a very precious substance and commodity. It was very price, pricey. And also they brought him myrrh. What is myrrh? Myrrh was a medicine, a medicine of that day. Have you ever heard your parents or your grandparents say, boy, it's expensive to get that medicine. That prescription cost a lot. Yeah. Do you know they brought to Jesus the three most expensive things they could? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Three gifts. That's why the number three that we're turning that, that M into, to remind us we always give God our best. We give God our, we, we want to love the Lord with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our strength. It reminds us that God is worth everything. And there's something you have to offer God. The wise men had something they could offer Jesus. And you have something that Jesus says that he wants to occupy in your heart. There's a gift of yourself. There's a gift of your heart you can give to the Lord. Now I want you to take that number three. I want you to turn it around until it looks like an E again. One more time, make it look like an E. Would you do that? Until it looks like an E. And the E stands for everybody. Everybody. 
The Bible tells us in Luke 2 and 10 that the shepherds came, excuse me, the angels came to the shepherds in the field and says, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. That means everybody. Everybody. John 3, 16. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. In other words, in other words, everybody. You see, God loves everybody. You haven't done something so bad. You, you're not too messed up. You haven't made too many mistakes. No matter what the situation is in life, nobody is beyond God's reach. God loves everybody. God's willing to embrace and bring salvation to everybody, and that includes you. I want you to know, church online, everyone here, maybe there's an adult, and you look back, and there's decade after decade of neglect and mistake and sin and, and wrong choices, and you say, my, my, I just messed up. Can I tell you, God loves everybody. You're not disqualified, and God's everlasting arms reach around you and embrace you and can give you hope and salvation. Now take the the M&M, one more time, I want you to turn around until it looks like a W again. Okay? Turn it around until it looks like a, a W again. And this stands for Waymaker. Waymaker. You see, Jesus, in John chapter 14, verse number 6, here's what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then in Isaiah chapter 43, the Bible says, And the Lord said, I am the one who will make a way through. What does that mean? He's the way maker. I am the one that will make a way through. Here's what it means. When nothing else is working, when a friend can't help you, and you can't hire a lawyer to get you out of trouble, your best friend won't turn your way. Somebody's unfriended you. Somebody's turned their back. Somebody's walked out on you. When life's not working, when it seems like nothing else is working, you, you don't have an idea of friend. You cannot put it together, and you feel like everything has hit rock bottom. Jesus is the way maker. He doesn't give up. He doesn't walk out. He's the God that cares for you. Jesus is the way maker.
with every voice, can we sing it out? Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see that you're working, when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working That's the God that we serve, Jesus. I'm going to invite you to be seated and allow me for a moment to just bring this to a personal moment for us today. I've shared with you the story of Christmas as we have in the Scripture, in the Bible. But let's bring it down to this. You see, Jesus, he went out of his way for us. Jesus went out of his way for you. God's only Son in heaven came to this earth, was born here on earth, a human. Why? So we could reach God and understand God. We were in our hearts as humanity saying something is missing. Our, our sin had separated us from God. And God could not stay on the sidelines. God got involved. And you see, God's love is bigger than your sin. Our sin, our mistakes, our failure, our disbelief, our disobedience, all the stuff that we know about us isn't right. We couldn't fix it, but Jesus came. And it would end up on a cross, and Jesus would shed his blood, and it would be the payment. It, it was the payment for all of our sin. Wrong sin has to be punished, has to be has to be discipline and God said he loved us too much to just throw us away and Jesus said then put the sin on me so they can have life that's what Jesus did and God's love is big enough to redeem us and to save us no matter where we've gone no matter how we've wandered in our life some of us we were at a time maybe walking with God and we've separated from the Lord some of us we've been on a journey with God we've been coming to that moment of belief but we feel we feel our failure our sin our condemnation we 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 feel undone we feel unworthy but because of Jesus we have hope we have life and God's made the pathway to him as clear as a b c a you have to acknowledge your need of God when you say, I need God, I can't fix my life, I can't do it on my own, 
you're at step A. Then it's believe. Believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son. Whosoever calls upon, believes in the name of the Lord, the Bible says, can be saved. A, B, and C is confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I'm going to lead you in a moment, whether online or here in the room, you can become a follower of Christ today when you, in sincerity, just call upon the Lord. There's no magic formula. It's just your heart reaching out to God. And I'm going to invite you right now to bow your hearts right now for a moment of prayer. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer moment. And I'm going to pray the kind of prayer you need to pray. And you can say this prayer with me or one like it that will come from your heart. And God's going to honor that. And if you want God, then Jesus will come into your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I so appreciate the fact you loved us enough that you sent your one and only Son, Jesus. I, I can't imagine the sacrifice that's made. It just, it's so astounding that you loved us that much. And I believe that Jesus can save me. I believe that truly he is the Son of God. And I call upon you right now. Jesus, come into my life. Although I don't fully understand what all that means I'm needing God in my life and I ask you to forgive me I ask you God that all the wrongdoings mistakes the sin of my life I can't number it all I just ask you forgive me I repent of my sin and I turn my life over to Jesus now and I commit this day to become a follower of Jesus, to walk with Jesus, and to, to try to put God first in my life. Help me, Lord, to follow you, and help me to serve you all the days of my life. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.